Hello, this is teacher Maria Jelnina, and today at Art School of SFB we're going to learn about the Bay Area figurative art movement. Local artists like Richard D.B. Korn, David Park, and Elmer Bishop were painting scenes of everyday life, like landscapes, interiors, people, but they looked almost like abstract paintings. With just a few shapes of color and a few smaller strokes, they were able to express a lot a movement, a mood, time of the day, um, some emotions, beauty of the Bay Area nature. Um, we are going to try this minimalistic style of painting today. Uh, please find a reference, ideally a landscape of the Bay Area, ideally the picture that you have taken yourself. And try seeing bigger shapes of color, not just plenty of rocks and plenty of leaves, but large colorful shapes and they will help you decide on your composition. Like in this picture, I feel like I need to cut off a little bit space on the left and on the right. Now I'm ready to start with my drawing on a cardboard. And first I will position the main parts. See horizon line is slightly higher than the center of my canvas. I'm using cardboard today. Uh, I prefer cardboards to paper and it's important to find the center of your work and position elements of your work according to the center like the golden gate bridge is slightly on the left from the center it's gonna be over here and the trees will be in the top right corner it's a good idea to trace your drawing with acrylics before you start painting, because it's easier to lose pencil lines, they're too light. And when you draw a horizon line, it's very important to make it straight, as always. Also, if you have some architecture, you can use a ruler for it, or just make sure to make the lines straight irregular all right my drawing is ready i can start painting now i prepared paint for the sky it's light blue so i will need some white and some blue and then some really dark blue uh probably a little bit of purple let's start so i'm mixing white and blue together adding some water and painting my sky. It's okay if you paint over your lines. Just make sure that the uh, layer of paint is pretty thin so you can still see that. Remember it's an expressionist landscape so you don't have to paint tiny elegant details but you need to get the overall expressive look. And C is also pretty much the same color, plus a little bit of green. If your brush is making fluffy lines, it wants more water. Add water to your paint. It is better to use flat brushes for acrylics and round brushes for watercolor. Uh, the foam is not completely white. I feel like getting a little bit of purple and blue. And with the same brush, I can now paint the purple mountain on the back. You can change your color slightly on the go. This will make it look more realistic and artistic. Now I'm painting the tree, trying to represent the character of the tree with the strokes. And like everything in this picture, my tree has light and shadow on it. 
and light is warmer so I'm adding some yellowish brownish color to it when you paint the trees make sure you integrate the colors of the tree with the colors of the sky um, use the very tip of your brush to make um, branches remember that branches are thinner than trunks and they're getting thinner uh, closer to the top and now I'm mixing colors for the cleave and the orange and brown and green and I make transitions between the colors while they are wet it's much easier this way Painting the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, remember to use smaller brushes for smaller details and larger brushes for background and water and hues. While working on small details, uh, do not hold your hand in the air, prop it against the cardboard and um, hold your brush closer to the tip, you will have more control this way. You can use your finger for blending. Halfway through my work, I realized that I forgot to add um, one more section to the Golden Gate Bridge, so I'm doing it now. And since the Golden Gate Bridge is architecture, um, I want to make sure that my lines are straight and it's also a center of my composition so i want to spend some extra time working on details making sure it looks nice to comply with the style i'm using as little details as possible in this work mostly focusing on colors and big shapes uh, but i feel like i need um, the shadows on marine headlands uh, so i'm adding them now Some final touches, highlights on the poles of the bridge and on trunks of the tree. And my picture is ready. Let's start yours now.